190 pounds, 92 Colgate champion, 93 Colgate team, 95 national champion. Boy, young man, give it up for him, y'all. The big boys. And in the blue, we have Michael Tang, 215 pounds. Asian Pacific champion, three-time U.S. Cup team. Give it up for Michael in the blue. Let's do this. Michael Tang has just Red. spent some time with blue. us out at the Olympic Training Center, now residing in Los Angeles. He's hoping to make another Oi having been a national champion, although in a smaller division. It's the one right below Michaels. He wants to make a name. Boy's got a good reputation. The big guys. We saw Oi hit Michael and fall down on that one. These guys can move and they're very skilled. Back in the 80s, you saw a lot of heavyweights with just a few basic techniques. And now you see these guys doing a lot of the same techniques as the smaller, lightweight competitors. Remarkable. So, the guys, this big. Boy, Young Lee in the red. Dad's a grandmaster. Got him started when he was four years old. Got the decided advantage on Michael Tang in that department. Yep. Yeah. Michael came out and trained, actually, as I said, at the Olympic Training Center. And he's a fast learner. He puts a lot of work into it, trains very hard. Originally from Boston, I believe. Wants to be an anchor. Living in L.A. right now, probably. Good way to go for him. Good looking kid. See how the altitude affects both of these guys. They're both flatlanders, as they say, or lowlanders. Boy from go. Minneapolis, Mike. Minnesota area. Michael Tang, ah! down to sea level in LA. Hey. Hello, hello. Not hitting with any of the fancy techniques. This is going to be a, probably about a six to five game in either one's favor at the end of this one. Although I would have to say Oil Lee has the advantage, in my opinion. What is it you like more? Uh, about his game? Uh, he seems to be a little bit more in control. Michael okay. seems to be a little bit more wild. Anyway, now we'll see. Coach Day Sung Lee telling Michael Tang to breathe. Good bit of coaching advice, especially at this altitude. A lot of times guys can't listen if they can't breathe. When it's cross time, it's cross time. Right leg is back, he doesn't do back to you to right leg. He does back into right leg. So when you do this, then you do push kick this way. Right? Then you do follow up your double. If he's like... Jimmy Greaser, George. Jimmy Greaser, George. Jimmy Greaser, George. Jimmy Greaser, George. Rolled Ferrer. After first round, red, Telling. four points. Blue, two points. Well, Red is ahead, a little lower score than I had thought. Okay. Roland Ferrer telling Oi okay. Lee to kick on Michael Tang's motion. What, that, what he's telling you to do is as Michael gives him a hard fake, a fake motion, as soon as he does that, just kick right off of that. Don't let Michael come in because he does have about 20 pounds on Oi, and that can make a difference. You saw it in the first round as Oi kicked Michael, and he's the one that fell down. Lee going for the axe kick, missing Michael Tang. I think Tang landed with one of his. Michael Tang throwing a nice double kick. Interesting to see if they're going to score that, how they're going to score that as a two, one or a three-point technique. Under the rules, they have double kick listed as a three-point technique, but it depends on if the first one landed. Michael Tang with a cut kick, keeping Oi Lee from punching to the chest. Oi feeling that he scored a good body shot on Michael there with a punch. Maybe not a point, but definitely taking some of the energy out of him. Michael Tang throwing a double kick. Both feet in the air at the same time at 215 pounds. Amazing. For anybody just watching Pro TKD for the first time, when the, when the two competitors scream like that, what, what's the origins of that? Well, that's a key out or a yell. And basically... What's happening go, is that, number one, they're tired. Number two, it helps them gain some more power because it helps you breathe. It helps you by, to key out properly, you have to squeeze your abdominal muscles. It helps you breathe. 
I mean, that's a basic. There's nothing mystical about it, like a lot of people tend to claim in the martial arts. In this case, it's mainly helping them breathe, and at this altitude, they definitely need it. Michael Tang looking a little tired, breathing through his mouth, not through his nose. And both guys really not expending a lot of energy because I don't think they have any energy to spend. Not in round two. But Michael Tang, if they gave him the, one of those double kicks, is going to be in the lead at the end of round two. Boy, Lee's been doing nothing but throwing one-point shots. One-point shots. What they have to do, Coach Daesung Lee's telling Michael Tang to go for the three and five-pointers. Boy's been throwing the one-point shots, and you can see his head, his tongue is dragging. Michael Tang is standing up, listening to Coach Daesung Lee. He's apparently got a lot better endurance, and he'll be able to push it here in the third round. And as you can see, the score at the end of round After two is... After second round, red, five points, blue, seven points. The difference is those double, those double kicks that Michael Tang threw. Red, red. They scored them, they gave him the extra points, it, it gave him the three-point technique as opposed to a one-pointer that Oi Lee's been getting. Last round, let's get it on. Smith, watch out! Shot. Shot. Final round, heavyweights. Boy Lee falling down. Referee Hanwon Lee bringing the action right back. Michael Tang going for the axe kick to the face. Landing on Oi Lee's chest. Oi falling down. The left leg for Oi Young Lee. Bothering him a little bit right now. Michael Tang the chance to really take this match over. His knee looks a little bit sore. It looks like he twisted it when he fell down. Oh, not a bomb. Not a bomb is a actual hopping step with a roundhouse kick turning to the backside. A lot of competitors will think you're coming in with a spinning hook kick, and then you follow up with a roundhouse kick. It, it's absolutely a phenomenal technique, and at 215 pounds, Michael Tang did it beautifully. Think Tang has anything left? With 30 seconds to go. Tang looks pretty good. Um, Oi Lee's the one. He's hands on his hips. He's breathing. He's not walking on the balls of his feet. He's walking flat-footed. Michael Tang, you see bouncing, chasing Oi to the back. Oi trying to score with the punch. Michael using his legs. Let's go, let's go, Definitely. Let's go, let's go. The strategy working in Michael left. Tang's favor. Oi Lee obviously is in, in better shape. Oi Lee in big trouble with only five seconds to go. Hello. And a tired Oi Lee at that. Two seconds, two seconds. Two seconds left. Match That'll do is it. over. Time. And unless something drastic happens that we didn't see, Michael Tang's the winner. Best front. And Oi Young Lee is stay here, stay here. pretty spent. You can see that head between the knees. <laughs> so he'll have to come back to the center of the ring for the decision. This altitude, though, I mean, he's down at lake level down in Minnesota, coming up. The altitude here at Aspen, I think, is over 8,000 feet here at the Wheeler Opera House. How long does it take for guys who come in to the altitude to adjust at the training center? Uh, usually two to three days if they're in good shape coming in. A lot of times you get guys, they say, yeah, I'm in great shape, and they come in, and they haven't been training, and they get to the altitude, and it absolutely kills them. Blue, 12 points. Red, 10 points. Blue wins. Surprise was that close. Michael the Tang, the winner. Michael Tang, actually, yeah, I, I thought he was, should have had at least a five-point lead. He was much stronger, throwing some high-scoring techniques in the third round. Oi Lee not doing much, flat-footed, sucking a lot of wind. Actually, but Michael had been training at this altitude again.